The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect those of this station. Welcome to Insights into Northeast Michigan, a WBKB News public affairs program. Insights deals with the issues affecting those in the community, as well as Northeast Michigan and the state. And now, Insights into Northeast Michigan. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Insights. I'm Alexandra Johnson, and today we're going to talk about media and how it affects the brain of children and adults today. And so my first guest of the show is Scott Ritzma from Grand Rapids. How are you today? I am doing well. Thank you for having me on the show. Good. And you're here to talk to us about a Media on the Brain, which is a seminar you're doing, correct? Yes, yes. Last night and tonight at the library. Okay, and first off, can you just tell me a little bit about Media on the Brain? Media on the Brain is a seminar that I have done many times now because everywhere I go in the country, throughout North America, I hear the same thing. My kids are addicted to video games or they just can't get those iPhone earbuds out of their ears. And, and again and again, I hear that our youth today are just so immersed in media that um, I, I felt the need to present some information to parents, to us adults, to just rethink how it is that we relate with our technology, particularly our entertainment media. So I've had the opportunity to speak at, at churches, schools, I've done parent meetings and teachers conventions, these sorts of events where we're just bringing to light some maybe neglected information that, that we haven't yet dialogued about before we dive into this 24-7 media immersed culture. Now what media are you specifically talking about? Within the seminar, I have a full six or seven, seven hours that I, that I cover. We're hitting bits and pieces of that here in Alpena where we're, we're trying to hit mainly on the entertainment culture, uh, the constant amusement that we find ourselves within, and, and, and trying to move maybe from a, an amusement culture to an edification culture, from entertainment to edification, and trying to enrich our lives and restore our humanity, so video games the movies, Hollywood, TV, the music industry, all, all of the, the entertainment that we find ourselves immersed in is the, the thing I really want to question. But also, just how about our 24-7 plugged in with the texting and the social networking and everything is, you know, we are more connected than ever, uh, but the question is, are, are we starting to lose what it means to be human and to have real interpersonal relationships? So we look at, at the entertainment, at the, the social networking and sort of being plugged in all the time. But then also, one thing that I've always been very concerned about is the effect to which the, the, the mainstream media and in, in Madison Avenue, the advertising industries, can shape our thoughts and, and our buying patterns. And, how that might affect children. So tonight, actually, that's the main topic we're taking on is the, the agenda within the media elite, if you will, to, to shape the minds of, of America. And so sort of all of that in one package and bits and pieces of it all. So what do you think is the, the biggest problem with America being plugged in all the time? Why is that such an issue? One of the big things we talk about with regards to our media consumption is addiction. Uh, what we're learning from the psychiatry community is that video gaming, for example, and other things, pornography use online, and these things are, are, are showing themselves to be very actually, cons very considerable addictions. Not just something where we throw out the term, you know, oh, I'm so addicted, but l actually clinically, diagnosably uh, addictive. And to see so many of, you know, I'm a teacher, and so many of my students um, getting so immersed in it that, that they can't help but go to it and to spend hours and hours and hours of their lives plugged into this, this counterfeit reality, if you will, sort of a, a simulated life that we're living. So the addictive components really, really concern parents, grandparents, teachers, and anybody looking at what's happening in our culture. When you look at what happens within the brain of an addict, you, you're looking at some serious damage as well, damage to the frontal lobe, prefrontal cortex, and we covered all of that in the previous session last night. That's one of the things. And, and another is how is, it, how is it shaping our character? You know, the, the morals of society is something that many are alarmed about as we seem to be degrading in a lot of ways in, in, our, in our affirmation of humanity and what it means to be a member of the community. And so we see a lot of concerns with regards to the big media of today. And of course, media is a double-edged sword, right? I mean, yes, it's being yes, it used is. right now as we speak on this broadcast to disseminate information and, and your programs share news and what's going on in the community. So we want to affirm and use media in a good way, but with an awareness mm -hmm. of these drawbacks. Right. So 
when you're saying that it actually damages the brain being plugged in all the time, so is that with texting, video games, social media, is that all of that together? It depends on, on the one. If we're looking at social media, for example, many studies have discovered that m the more Facebook you use, the more depressed you feel. And so that's going to lead to neurological changes in terms of the mood. Uh, when it comes to video games, major frontal lobe damage is what we're looking at in the, in the studies. And, and also, a lot of these entertainment media particularly alter the state of consciousness that you operate within and so your ability to think clearly to discern truth from error to to, to think and, and and have have reason engaged within the mind all of that is sort of de decoupled and you're sort of lulled into this more passive state and so that's another brain altering effect that that is a concern particularly with the entertainment and a lot of these altering effects people don't even think about you know you just pull out your your iPhone your cell phone and you're texting away to your friends you know you're updating your Facebook Twitter um, checking YouTube and you just don't even realize that it is physically damaging your brain um, so what is what are some tips that you can give to parents to help them monitor this with their kids? One thing that I recommend to all families is have, have tech-free periods of your day where you're not always available constantly to answer that immediate Facebook post. Because when we're living in this multitasking world, with studies have shown that it reduces intelligence. Your IQ drops up to 10 points when you're trying to multitask. By the way, 10 points is twice the amount of IQ drop than being high on marijuana or losing an entire wow. night's sleep. So it's, it's really going to affect our intelligence mm -hmm. in that moment when we're trying to multitask so have those tech free times during the day and also one of the things we're going to talk about tonight is how to actually just have an all-out media fast I've talked talk to many families who said we're just going to unplug from all of this for a number of days and just see what life is like again without all of these distractions and these things that that are reducing our ability to pay attention and to have relationships and to move from one job to another all of the research is in showing that this multitasking stuff is having an effect and so breaking free from it for periods of time. Now have you talked with families who have tried this media fasting? Um, have they said it's pretty difficult to do? It is a challenge in the following respect. When it comes to video game addiction especially, any age, this is not just about young people, the biggest video game addicts are my age, but when parents come in and say we're going to not do you know modern warfare we're not going to do world of warcraft or whatever or, or even minecraft for the next 30 days it's kind of a scary moment for the the young person because within the reward circuitry of the brain this is where they get the pleasures from playing that game those are the same circuits that signal for survival so telling a addict of any substance or behavior you don't get to have that anymore is like telling their brain that you might die because it's like the survival right. circuits, right? And so that is very hard. Sometimes we see some pretty, you know, intense reactions. So, you know, I would advise caution and get some counsel and help on that. But um, it, after the period of time of fasting is over, I hear, always hear the same thing. I'm glad we did it. Yeah. And um, lastly, before we go to break, what are some of the most startling statistics you have seen? The screen time for the average American child is 53 hours a week. There are 5 million video gamers playing over 40 hours a week in wow. America. And there are 19 million video game addicts. That's a lot. That's and more these, than you would think. Yeah, kids age 2 to 5 are actually spending 32 hours a week in front of the TV. So some of these numbers really are alarming, even if the content of the media is totally harmless. Okay. All right. Well, thanks so much, Scott, for being here with us today and filling us in on everything we need to know about media. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right. And we will be right back with our second guest of Insights. Welcome back, everyone. Our second guest of the day is Mark Kuzma, and he is the one who um, has brought in Scott to do the seminar here in Alpena. So how are you doing today? I'm fine, Alexandra. Good. Now, first of all, I just want to ask you, why did you feel that it was so important to uh, have this Media on the Brain seminar? Well, Alexandra, I'm a, a business uh, person here in the county, and for several years we've been a direct marketing firm. Uh, we're an internet company, so we're involved in media. Mm -hmm. uh, and I talk to a lot of different people uh, in a day-to-day in -day basis. Um, architects, engineers, designers, common everyday people. Um, and it seems to me that uh, over the past several years there's been a building uh, unease with uh, what people see happening in their communities and in their families. And uh, 
there's a couple of pro approaches to dealing with that issue. Uh, I call it the root and the fruit. Uh, for example, if you take a problem like gun violence in Chicago, uh, the response to that generally has been put more police on the uh, street. Mm -hmm. um, another response would be to have further gun laws, mm -hmm. more increased gun laws. Uh, but that really doesn't deal with the root of the problem, does it? No, it doesn't. Um, you have to get back to what's actually causing the issue. And that is, of course, what's happening in the families that produce these young people who are involved in gun violence. About two years ago, I was uh, in, a, in a seminar uh, setting down in southern Michigan. And I happened to get a segment of Scott's presentation. At that time, he was just developing and beginning this seminar. About a year later, this was last year, I attended his full seminar. And what I really liked about Scott's seminar is the fact that he goes back and starts dealing with the root. You know, um, I have uh, these issues I face in my business and in my mm -hmm. family too. For example, I could have a, a young man come in uh, in the morning and he's grumpy. You know, any of us have worked with fellow uh, workers or companions that are grumpy. Well, what do we do with that? Do we discipline him for the grumpiness? Do we dis do we deal with that? Uh, what's actually happening at the moment, or do we sit him down and say, now, what's happening at home? Did you get a good night's sleep last mm -hmm. night? Uh, did you just have an argument with your wife, you know? Right. What is the real source of this issue? And so uh, I think Scott is doing a marvelous job in, in identifying what, what is the source of some of these issues that are making us so uncomfortable uh, in, in the things that we see going on around us. So have you seen, I know you said you're a businessman, um, have you seen in your business, you know, and I guess in the community as well, a lot of people who are becoming more detached from society because they're so involved in social media and video games and that sort of thing? Well, yeah, I, I think that if you, if you actually look at, take, take my business for example, I deal with employees on a daily basis. And we're finding, uh, my experience has been over the past years that the result of uh, immersion in media to the extent that we see it today is that you, you have people who are less able to concentrate on a task. Their minds are every place but at their work. And that presents a problem to me as a businessman, uh, as someone who's responsible for the health and safety of my workers because they're not concentrating. And in our business, we're, 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 we're working with machines that can be, if you're not careful, you know, if you're not on top of your game. It can be uh, dangerous. So uh, that's been a concern that I have. Also, in the interpersonal relations I see going on in the relationships that are, that are mm -hmm. people who are working for us, they're much more challenging. Um, so in that way, yes. And even in the uh, interactions that I'm having around the community, I'm seeing that uh, there seems to be less of a family atmosphere. There seems to be less closeness that's going on. We do seem, like you said, to be more detached. And do you think that social media, um, I guess not just social media, but all media, is the root of a lot of those issues of people not being able to communicate with one another at work? Well, whether it's work or in the home, mm -hmm. uh, the general busyness. Um, I can remember when I was a, a child and growing up in the neighborhood that I grew up in. Uh, we had families that were intact. They were home. When I got home from school, my mom was there. You know, mm -hmm. and if I went out into the neighborhood, my, you know, if it wasn't my mom, it was 16 other moms, you know. They were all in this community uh, that was a lot closer. Everyone knew what everyone's little boy or little girl was doing around the neighborhood. So moms could say, where are you going? And you could say, well, I'm going down to, to Billy's house. And there was no problem with that. You know, you might get back whenever she said to get back. But there was a, a feeling of, of uh, not only community but safety, you know. And now we, we're in a world that is, and in a community that is not as safe, it is not as connected, and uh, part of that is uh, the issue of uh, what we are spending our time doing, mm -hmm. not in the social interaction, right. you know. Uh, I don't know how many times you've been invited out to dinner in the past uh, month or two, but when I was uh, growing up and even in the recent past, it seems like we were always at one another's houses. We knew each other. We knew what uh, our neighbors were thinking about. 
and what they were concerned about. But now uh, it seems like we're so busy, and I'm guilty of that too in my business. You know, I work 10, 12, 14 hours a day. Well, I don't have the time to spend with my wife or on the phone with my children or visiting with them that uh, I would really like to have. So do you feel like when you were younger, you had better connections with more people in your community and you were um, you know, better off because you didn't have um, all of this media? Well, I would say that uh, all you have to do is go out on the street here in front of the uh, library and ask ten, five or 10 people and they're going to tell you. I can almost wager they're going to tell you that uh, they are less connected today than they were five years, 10 years, 20 years. And some of us who may be approaching <laughs> a little bit uh, more of a, a longevity, we can see that a little clearer than, than uh, people maybe who have grown up in the media culture. So how would you recommend that people get back to those roots and better connect with people in their area and put down the cell phone? Well, I think that's a fairly simple uh, problem. Uh, it has to do with our choices. What is really important to us? What's important to you? What's important to me? If people are important, we're going to have to make that decision between sitting on playing that video game or watching that football game and get out with our kids and with our family members and connect. Okay. I agree. Connection is, is mm -hmm. everything. It's so important to be able to Correct. sit down with a person mm -hmm. and have a normal conversation. So I just want to thank you so much for being here today. I think you bring up a lot of great points that people should think about. Well, thank you. It's been my pleasure. Yes, it has. And stick around because after the break, we'll be back with our third guest. Welcome back, everyone. Leslie Dorr is here with us, and she's an, a marketing instructor from ACC. How are you doing today? Excellent. It's a beautiful day. Yes, yes, it is. I'm glad you could come speak to us about marketing. Well, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, and the first thing I want to start off with is I know you teach marketing. Can you just kind of give us a broad overview of what is marketing today? Oh, absolutely. Marketing is the same thing today as it was years ago, generations ago. The point is to match up the consumer with the product and or service. Okay, now how has it evolved over time? Over time, if you take us back to the 1900s, it was a purely production-based marketing model in that um, I have soap, you smell, <laughs> here's my soap. Right. And that's basically it. Uh, you didn't have the ability or the time to make soap. You were out farming. And it wasn't about my soap smells better, my soap is uh, less harmful to the environment, it was my soap cleans. So you buy it, you trade, you make the economic exchange. It's grown since then. Mm -hmm. um, we all know how to make soap or c can know how to make soap now. It's not tricky in right. the basics, some lye and other ingredients and you have soap. Um, but the point is we don't want to make soap. So now you have to sell us on it. You have to convince us that your soap is what we want to buy. Right, because there's you know 50 different brands of everything. Sure. So when I go to the store, how do I know which one I think is the best to purchase? And the marketing executive, the marketing company that is working with that product is going to tie into the target market. They know what their product is. So they need to then know where are the people who would want my product where uh, should I distribute it? In what realm, in what country, in what space of a country, which culture would use this product? They need to know distribution methods. They need to understand the price point that that market can bear and uh, what really flips the switch in that consumer's brain that, yes, that's what I need. So those are some of the tactics they use, correct, is figuring out you know, which, which person they want to market that to, how they want to sell it, um, that sort of thing, right? Absolutely. Marketing is really based in sociology and psychology. If you're uh, someone who is involved in marketing, you're very attuned in the sociology and psychological areas of science. So how are they related a little bit? Um, I need to know how you tick in order to know what hair product you want, in order to know what type of food you're going to want to eat. And if you eat these things, demographics tell us, Geographics tell us, socioeconomical scales will tell us that if you do A, B, and C, then my product is going to be something that you want. Okay. And I know since we have all of this media nowadays, TV, Facebook, video games, you know, Instagram, all of that stuff, 
Is that something that marketing people utilize all of those things? Constantly, and we're, we're tracking everything you do if, if we choose to. When you go to a site, if you get an email from a site and there's a link within that site, the company that sent it has the ability to track you. Once you open their email, once you click on that link, and every click you do from there on out. And then they can print out reports and absolutely know everything you did once you clicked on that email. So do you think that's a positive or a negative thing that, um, well I guess it could be positive for one and negative for the other maybe, if knowing that I can be tracked doing anything. Um. And that's the argument right now. Uh, if you've noticed in the past probably quarter, mm -hmm. maybe longer, um, I'm not on Facebook as often as you might think, Facebook started tailoring the ads that show up on your feed for those if you're on Facebook. Right. So now the, the feed, if, if yesterday you searched online for a vacuum cleaner, all of a sudden on your Facebook feed, you're finding all kinds of options for vacuum cleaners right. and like products mm -hmm. because Facebook is tracking you. If you don't log out, they're tracking you, whether you're on or not. Every, everything that you log into has that ability online. Secrets aren't what they used to be. Mm -hmm. We're not separated any longer by the farmland next to us. That's right, we aren't. So do you think that's a positive for the media people then, correct, because they know how to market to you then? Oh, if you understand the analytics end of that, and we actually have some very bright individuals in Alpina that can help you learn them, uh, you can take your product just about anywhere. We also have a very global world right now. Mm -hmm. Because I make something in Northeast Michigan does not limit me to selling it in Northeast Michigan. I would guess that many folks in Alpena would be surprised to learn we have independent business individuals who their business is overseas. They manufacture overseas, they sell overseas. They do it from the comfort of their home, raising their family, so that they can have family time. Right, and do you think that that's because of the media we have today, the options we have? It, it is the options. We've grown immensely. The, exponential growth with electronics and technology that has happened in the lives of the 20 year old right now are unprecedented. Right, so do you think with all this media, do you think it's helping people to become smarter or is it making them um, less aware of what's going on around them? They have the potential to be smarter and more aware, but the potential resides within as it always has you're always going to have the individual who is going to lay down and just do whatever is handed to them. You're also going to have a very hard worker who takes advantage of all those tools and uses the search engines and learns. There are classes online that you can take for free college level courses if right. you want to. They're at your fingertips. So you definitely don't think that, um, I know a lot of people think maybe not all media but most mm -hmm. of media has a negative effect on people but you don't believe that? No, media is not bad. Uh, how we were raised can alter anything. Uh, parenting is still the core of it, the family unit. And that family unit isn't necessarily mom, dad, and kids. The family is who influences you as you grow up. Right. That, that's always had more effect on anyone than what marketing can do. So how do you think we can use the, the internet and these marketing tools to enhance our lives? Uh, same way a marketer can, actually. You can learn about different cultures. You can find out what what is the most uh, prevalent demographic in Alpena. And why is that? I mean, isn't that of interest to anybody, the community exactly. that you live in? What makes it tick? How would you get involved? You want to make something better? Find out why you think it's bad to begin with. And you have so many tools and resources, and they're human resources too, just not technology. It's just we have to remember to pick up the phone or walk next door and knock on the door. Yeah, and how to properly use all the tools we have right. nowadays. And be protective. Right. Identity theft and security is a huge issue. Because it's so cool, you think, you know, I want to know, you know, about this exotic animal or something. So you just go on Google, you know, type it in and you have all of these facts and tools and resources that pop up. And I think that's the beauty of media today. We can learn anything. We can travel, I mean, we're sitting in a library. We can travel through books. We can travel through the internet. We can find out more information about things that we never dreamed we could before. Yes, we can. 
Well, I just want to thank you so much, Leslie, for being here today. Um, we appreciate everything that you informed us on about marketing. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks so much. And thanks for joining us here on Insights today. Tune in next week. Insights into Northeast Michigan is produced by WBKB News. If you have any comments, suggestions, or topics you would like to see on a future show, please email WBKB News. This has been a production of Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation. All rights reserved.